Okay, we're here at Suzuki and we're going to be using this 200 horsepower unit to demonstrate some of the points that I'm going to make. But you'll find that most manufacturers these days are producing similar sorts of engines, four-stroke engines with automotive styles of design. So we're just going to use this as, as, as a demo engine for that purpose. Uh, when you get the engine out ready to use in the springtime, there are a number of things you're going to have to do to make sure that the engine runs properly, gives you the best performance, fuel economy and reliability. The first thing I would recommend that you need to look at is the engine oil level. Now we will have hoped that your dealer will have changed the oil before the winter and that the oil level and quantity won't be any great problem. But I would always, always make sure that you check these over. All of our engines nowadays will be four-stroke engines and we'll have a sump uh, containing marine oil, engine oil, and they'll have a dipstick such as this. This is a typical dipstick and on the end of it will be marks as you would normally see in the dipstick of your car engine. Always check that the oil level is, is good, is okay, before you use the engine in the water. Don't be tempted to overfill uh, your engine because that can do as much damage as, as running an engine that has insufficient oil. Make sure it's correct and leave it at that. The most important things when trying to start an engine for the first time in the spring is that you may have residual fuel from the winter still in the fuel system. Now engines nowadays tend to be fuel injected and there will be a number of components uh, that are involved in the fuel system. Typically they will have a water separating filter such as this one here which has a transparent bowl so you can see if there's any water in it. It may even have an electronic trigger to tell the owner if there's water in the system. Uh, there will be a pump, typically a mechanical pump at the front here to lift the fuel from the onboard tank up through to this device here which is called the, called the vapour separator. The purpose of this is to provide a head of fuel for the injection pump to work properly. If an engine has been stored for a long period of time, there's a danger that there will be remnants of fuel in this system from the previous year. And as always happens with small amounts of fuel that are left for long periods, they tend to lose their volatility and they don't ignite very easily. So it's always a good idea to make sure any residual fuel is drained out before you try to start the engine. So I would recommend that following the instructions which you'll find in your owner's manual, that you drain the fuel out of the uh, water separating filter here and that you also drain the fuel from this vapour separator. You'll find there's a screw at the bottom there to enable you to do that. Once that's been drained out, you'll need to prime the system with fresh fuel. And when I say fresh fuel, uh, I mean that it will be a good idea to make sure the fuel in your onboard tanks is drained. Also, any water that's in there is taken away uh, so that you can run on fresh fuel in the spring. Um, the device that's used for a lot of uh, engines from different manufacturers to, to bring the fuel up to the system from the onboard tanks is a priming bulb such as this. This will be connected in line with your fuel, uh, fuel line here to the tank. Prime this system up by squeezing the bulb and fresh fuel will be poured up through, through this uh, water separating filter here, uh, through the, the uh, automatic uh, mechanical pump here on the front, the lift pump, through into the vapour separator at the back here. Once you start to feel resistance, you'll first, certainly you'll see fuel in that bowl there. The resistance is caused by the fuel reaching a level in the vapour separator. Once that's done, and you know you've got a decent oil level here, and your engine is in the water, ready to go, then try to start it. Uh, you may find it doesn't start straight away, it doesn't fire up immediately, um, because it will take a while for the fresh fuel to be pumped through the injection system, um, and for the engine to fire up then. If you see smoke from uh, the exhaust uh, in the water, don't be surprised, don't be worried at that. If your dealer has winterized your engine properly, they will have used what is known as fogging oil, which is an oil spray which is put into the induction system as a last operation before the engine is stopped and winterized. The purpose of fogging oil is to coat the inside of the engine with a, a good oil that stops, that stops corrosion, that doesn't drain away from the surfaces. That oil will cause smoke, don't be surprised at that. It may cause a little bit of a misfire sometimes. But usually within a few minutes, the engine should start to run cleanly uh, and then you can operate it from there. The next thing to note, note is that obviously when the engine starts up, you should see water coming from the telltale or pilot water outlet. 
It depends on the kind of engine as to where that's located. On this engine, it's on the side here, but there will be a familiar jet of water from the system to show that the cooling system pump is working, water's being drawn up around the system. Always make sure that's working. If it's not working, stop the engine. Don't let it overheat. Uh, there may be a simple reason for it, but always be, be careful about that. Don't just run the engine regardless. Starting a small portable engine after the winter can actually be more troublesome than starting a large engine. The reason being that the fuel systems are very small capacity, uh, especially a carburetor uh, fed engine. Some small portable engines have their own inboard fuel tanks. This one is different, of course, but some have a little tiny fuel tank underneath the hood. Um, these engines can be notoriously difficult to start uh, in the spring. Because of the small quantity of fuel involved and a little carburetor float bowl as well, you may find that the fuel will lose uh, its ignitability uh, very rapidly during the winter. And so rather than struggle to try to start the engine in the spring, it's always essential to drain away the old fuel completely from the engine and put fresh fuel in uh, and you'll find it will start very easily from that point onwards. When your dealer winterizes your engine, uh, one of the most important things that they do is to flush the system out, flush the, the cooling system out of the engine. Now, that's very important, uh, especially for engines that are used in a marine environment because of the amount of salt that gets within the cooling system. If it's allowed to stay there, especially during the winter, it will tend to attract moisture and cause internal corrosion of the engine. And so the dealer should have flushed it out. Now, we'd expect you as a, an owner to also flush your engine out on a regular basis. The, the fact that an engine is used in, in a marine environment makes it more prone to corrosion. But even an engine that's used in a freshwater environment, lakes and rivers, they can still pull up a certain amount of debris, a certain amount of silt, mud from the, the river or whatever, and which can accumulate in the cooling system of the engine. So it's important to flush that out on a regular basis. If you look in your owner's manual, you'll find that there are different ways of doing this. Uh, manufacturers will have preferred ways of doing it. For Suzuki, certainly we would like to see it done on a regular basis preferably by a dealer who can use a flushing adapter which can fit onto the water intakes down here. And this can be done out of the water, but with a, a forced fresh water supply through an adapter into the intakes here, and the engine can be run up while it's done. So the engine can be operated in neutral, uh, on the back of the boat, uh, away from the actual water itself, but with a good supply at the bottom there. That's a preferred way of doing it because the fresh water is poured up through the entire system, through the pump, which is located here, through the system and back out through uh, the central propeller in this case. And that means it's a completely thorough flushing uh, operation that will clear debris out from the pump as well as the rest of the system up here. And the engine is, of course, operating at the time. It's warm uh, and it will make sure that the, the whole system is done thoroughly. As an owner, you can, on a regular basis, flush your engine quite easily using an adapter here on the side of the engine. Now, this is designed to be the same thread as a garden hose, and you can put a garden hose in here and flush it out um, frequently. But this must be done with the engine switched off. Do not try running the engine while you are flushing through here. For the reason that this is above the level of the water pump. So if you're putting fresh water in there, if you try to run the engine, that water pump is running dry down here. There may be some water to get to it, but there's a danger that pump can burn out. It's a rubber impeller. The friction will cause it to overheat and burn. So never run the engine while you're flushing through here with a garden hose. But please do flush it on a regular basis with it switched off, and that way you'll keep a lot of debris and corrosion from inside the engine.